also want to ask you about Haiti, where these massive anti-austerity protests recently shut down parts of the capital, Port-au-Prince. The protests began Friday, when the government tried to dramatically raise fuel prices at the behest of the International Monetary Fund. Prices for gasoline, diesel, kerosene were to rise as much as 50 percent. But due to the protests, the Haitian government rescinded the price hikes. Um, can you comment on what's taking place? A few people have been killed right now. The various U.S. airlines have stopped flying into Haiti. Well, you know, in the 70s and 80s, you had a lot of these. They used to call them uh, IMF riots because they were caused by IMF austerity policies. And this is part of it. Uh, this is actually what triggered it. You had this uh, six-month period where uh, Haiti was supposed to uh, make these reforms and, and one, in order to get a loan from the IMF. And this is something I think people here also don't know because it's not emphasized enough. But the IMF has this power in poor countries, and they used to have it in a lot more countries, where if they don't give a loan, then they don't get money. For example, Haiti was going to get money uh, last week. Uh, it was approved from the European Union and the Inter-American Development Bank. And you don't get money from anyone else if you don't get the IMF money. And the IMF was saying, you've got to cut these uh, subsidies uh, to uh, gas and kerosene and energy. And uh, so this was um, obviously, you know, there's a certain rationale to this. I mean, it's not like these su subsidies are progressive in terms of income distribution. But you, you've got, you know, half the country, majority country, living under 240 a day. They're living in 58 percent poverty rate, and uh, the economy's been stagnating for years. And so uh, people are on the edge, and you can't just cut these subsidies. The, the government thought, you know, without providing, without protecting, people are going to be hurt. And so uh, the government didn't do anything uh, to to provide for that. And they thought they were going to get away with it because they announced it right in the middle of the Brazil versus ben uh, Belgium uh, soccer match on uh, Friday. And it didn't work at all. People were in the streets uh, immediately. And, you know, here, I think you also have to, and you've covered this on the, the show and you know this history, but, you know, uh, this is a very disenfranchised population. And the U.S., yeah, only 20 percent voted in the election that elected the, the current president in 2016. And they had to fight to get that election, because in 2015, you had this totally fraudulent election that the U.S. was trying to force the uh, government to accept. And you know, so you have this history, this very long history, but even just since 1990, the United States has helped overthrow the government twice. And uh, people used to vote in, in, in large numbers. And uh, they're, they're very, very disenfranchised now. They've really, uh, I, I think our government has played a, a major role in destroying what democracy that, uh, that Haiti had. Uh, but, Mark, I want to also ask you about Brazil, where a, a legal and political battle has erupted after a judge ordered former president and the current presidential frontrunner, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, known as Lula, to be released from prison as he appeals a corruption conviction that he says is politically motivated. Hours after the Sunday morning ruling, a second judge, uh, a higher-level uh, uh, judge, overruled the order. Lula remains in jail. I wanted to ask you how you saw what's going on there now. Well, this kind of further makes it obvious. I mean, why is Lula in jail? He has a constitutional right to be uh, free on appeal. There's no reason to keep him there. You know, he surrendered to the authorities. He's not leaving the country. And they don't have any real excuse for it, except that he's the front runner in the October election by a large margin, and he would win the presidency. And this is a, you know, again, this is part of a pattern that you see uh, of persecution against the former uh, left governments, uh, Argentina. Uh, you have, you know, some people are calling it lawfare, but I think it's, it's, it's much worse than that. They're really trying to uh, put these people in jail. The president of Ecuador, also former president, Correa. So you have this uh, all over, and of course, uh, to varying degrees, it has U.S. support. The U.S. Justice Department was involved in the investigation uh, in Brazil that, you know, led to uh, this, uh, these charges against Lula, which had no material evidence. Uh, so 
And how uh, was again, the Justice Department involved? Yeah, well, they were just, they, they helped with the investigation, and we don't even know everything they did. There are people trying to find that out now. But it is, you know, you can see why people in Brazil see this as very unusual. I mean, imagine that, you know, Russia was involved in the investigation of <laughs> Mueller's investigation here. You know, it's it's inherently uh, suspicious. But I want to say, just I hope you know. We just uh, have thirty seconds, Mark. Yeah. Okay. So this is <laughs> this is one thing I want to say that people don't think this is all hopeless. You know, you do have the seventy-six member Progressive Caucus in the U.S. Congress that has taken very strong positions. There's a, a letter circulating right now in Congress that's ca calling for the release of Lula, and they they put out a statement congratulated uh, Amlo on his victory and supporting this kind of foreign policy. You have people like Ro Khanna, who just had a piece in The Nation with uh, Danny Glover. And all these people, you have a real force here that is saying that that is clearly against any kind of regime change efforts that respect sovereignty in Latin America. And this is a very big thing, and it's a very hopeful thing. And uh, I want to make sure people understand that, that this is a major uh, uh, effort at resistance to these kinds of uh, policies that we haven't had for quite and a while. And Danny Glover just visited Lula in prison in, the, in uh, Brazil. That's right. <clears throat> well, if people want to hear our hour interview with Lula right before he went to prison, you can go to democracynow.org. Mark Weisbrot, we want to thank you for being with us, co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research, president of Just Foreign Policy. We'll link to your pieces on these variety of issues on Latin America. This is Democracy Now! Back in 30 seconds.